Good morning, dear students. Today we're going to start the first unit in the second term for uh, second prep. Uh, this is unit seven and the title is Technology and the Future. Now this unit, as you can see here, uh, this is about technology and what will happen in the future. Let's read at first. Uh, number A, when these headphones hear another language, they can translate it into your language. Translate means to change from a language to another. Like to translate a text from Arabic to English, to translate a text from English to French, for example, and we always say translate into. And uh, of course, this, uh, this is number uh, uh, two here. It has uh, headphones. Now let's read number B. Is it a motorbike? Is it a helicopter? What is a motorbike? This is a bike with two wheels and it moves with a motor. And we have also a helicopter, a kind of plane that has no wings, but it has something like a fan on the top. Is it a motorbike? Is it a helicopter? No. This invention is half motorbike and half helicopter. It can push you into the air. Push you means to move you forwards. Push you into the air at the speed of a fast car. And I want you to pay attention to the expression at the speed of. At the speed of. For example, a train can move at the speed of 100 kilometers per hour. Now let's go to number C. This clever jacket, this one here in number one, <clears throat> this clever jacket uses an app to make you warmer when the weather is cold. This is picture number one. Number D, change roads into solar panels. Solar refers to the sun, the energy that comes from the sun, solar panels. This invention uses strong glass that you can drive on and make electricity at the same time. Now, to, uh, tur let's turn to uh, page three uh, and look at the language section, which deals with the grammar of this unit. And the grammar of this unit talks about the future simple tense, the future simple tense. And we have uh, uh, some information here about the grammar lesson. Use will and will not or won't, this is the short form, to talk about the future predictions. The headphones will be very useful for traveling or the machine won't be able to fly very high. So for the future, we use the future simple tense, which consists of will or want plus infinitive. Will or want plus infinitive to talk about future actions. And of course, we have some keywords. Uh, they are tomorrow, next, soon, immediately, or in the future. Now let's read and answer question uh, here, number one. Uh, the machine won't be able to fly very high. Uh, this exercise depends or based on uh, the listening uh, text here. I think lots of people will want to buy one of these. Number three, it won't help people to speak other languages won't help one plus infinitive. Maybe they will make one to help the people to be cooler. Number five, I hope they will build lots of these in Egypt. Now I want you to look at this uh, exercise, some collocations or expressions. As you can see, we are going to match A and B. Have, we say have money, have money, save money or save time, spend money or spend time, 
waste money or waste time wait for delivery wait for delivery and we can say also have a choice now let's read uh, the passage here this is about shopping online yes or no some people agree on shopping online they like to shop online and some people don't like it they they like uh, to do real shopping now let's read we're going to read about two persons inji and Beher. inji i love online shopping now let's read together shopping online is great firstly it saves me time i don't want to spend lots of time traveling to the shops i can stay at home and buy the things i want in a few minutes secondly i have more choice online also if more people shop online there will be fewer cars on the road and less pollution i will do all my shopping online when i'm older now this means that she is ng is for shopping online she is for shopping online she is for something it means that she likes it now let's read about another person Beher, i prefer going to real shops in my city every time i buy clothes online the thing that i buy is wrong at the shop i can see what i'm buying and i can try it try it first also i don't like to waste time waiting for a delivery i want things now if everyone shops online the shops in our towns and cities will close if they close then lots of other businesses like cafes will close too now let's look at this table read the article again and complete the table with the reasons for again for or against shopping online for it saves time and another reason to be for shopping online um, fewer cars in the road and less pollution this is an advantage fewer cars in the street and less pollution now for against some reasons to be against shopping online you can try things before you buy sometimes you receive the wrong item you receive the wrong thing and if uh, people shop online many shops will close and many businesses like cafes and restaurants will also close now let's turn to page five uh, we have another grammar lesson here how to use if or when if or when in the first conditional we use if or when here we have the rule we use if or when plus present simple and then the future simple to express prediction again we use if or when plus present simple and the other verb will be future simple which means will plus infinitive like here the examples if everyone shops online we have if and present simple shops the shops in our town and cities will close or sometimes we can use if or when in the middle of the sentence like this and we begin the sentence with the future simple i will do all my shopping online when i'm older now let's turn to this exercise complete the sentence with the correct form of the verbs in brackets and we have an example here in number one i go to the shops if i go to the shops i will spend a lot of money number two when huda visits cairo after when or if we use present simple visits with s at the end because huda means she she will buy some new shoes number three hassan won't use the internet to buy food when he is older number four Mona looks Mona will look online for a new phone when she gets home 
Number five, if I buy everything online, I won't be able to go shopping with my friends. Now, we have uh, very important expressions to be used here. As you can see in these four boxes, I think I'm addicted to my phone. Some people are addicted to their phones. What's the meaning of addicted? Addicted means to spend too much time using these things. To spend too much time using these things. This is the meaning of addicted. Some people are addicted to online games. Some others are addicted to their phones. Number B, I spent lots of money in an online game by mistake. By mistake. What's the meaning of by mistake? It means that you, uh, you do something you didn't mean or you don't mean to do it. You don't mean to do or you don't intend to do these things. It was done by mistake. For example, I took my friend's pen by mistake. I didn't mean to take it. Number C, I spent hours watching videos online and now I have headaches. Headache is a pain in your head. A pain in your head. Number four, sometimes my friends say horrible things about me on social media. Now let's see the meaning of horrible. Horrible means awful or very bad. Awful or very bad. Social media means something uh, like uh, Facebook, like Twitter, like Instagram. These are called social media. Now, turn to page seven. We have uh, an exercise here. We're going to match to make sentences. Uh, you should have a break. And we're going to match it with number C if you are sitting at a computer for a long time. Number two, you shouldn't watch video on the internet if your head hurts. If your head hurts means if you have pain in your head, if you have a headache. Number three, if you don't know someone, A, you shouldn't make friends with them online. Number four, you should tell a parent or a teacher, E, if you feel worried about something. Number five, when you go to bed, you should turn your phone off. This is number B. Now, look at page eight, and we have a story uh, which is called the time machine. Of course, this is not a real story. We're going to read here uh, the passage below the picture. London, England, 1895. A group of friends meet for dinner at Time Traveler's house. After dinner, the Time Traveler asks his friends if they think that it's possible to travel through time. It's impossible, they reply. We can only travel through space, not time. Impossible means something that can never be done. The Time Traveler shows them a small model of a machine that he has in his hand. This is a copy of a machine that I believe can go through time. It took me two years to build, he tells them. The friends laugh. Of course, they laugh because they didn't understand, they didn't believe him. Pull this lever. Pull means to take something towards you. To pull something means to take something towards you. And the opposite of pull is push. Pull and the opposite is push. Lever, it's something like a hand, like this here in the picture, something like a hand, which you use to, uh, to run a machine. A lever is something we use, okay? We, we can uh, pull or push it to run a machine. Pull this lever, he tells one of them. They feel some wind, then the machine suddenly disappears. Where is it? The other men ask. The model machine is in the future, the time traveler says. Would you like to see the real machine? He asks. He takes them to another room. Inside the room, 
is another bigger machine. It's not finished. In this machine, he says, I will explore the past and the future. Explore means to know more information about something. To know more information about something. Now, after reading this passage, let's revise the uh, new vocabulary. We said that impossible means never be done. Something which is never be done. Pull means to use your hand to take something towards yourself. And lever is a hand, something like a hand or a handle that you use to run a machine. Disappears means vanished. It's no longer there. Explore means to know more information about something. Now we have a very important uh, lesson which talks about the dangers of technology. Technology is very good, but it causes many problems to the humans. Now let's read about the dangers of technology. Sleep, many people text, check social media or watch videos online late into the night. Then they don't get enough sleep. This is here to complete the sentence here. They don't get enough sleep. And technology causes eye problems. If you spend a lot of time on screen, and I want you to pay attention to this uh, uh, expression on screens, you can have eye problems and headaches. Number three, ear problems, listening to loud music or films through uh, the websites or the internet can damage your hearing. Number four, exercise. Many people spend hours playing games or watching TV and don't spend enough time on doing exercise. We always say on. Now at lesson, uh, in lesson six, we have um, an email. Okay, dear sir or madam, I ordered a new mobile phone last week and the delivery was today. When I opened the box, the screen was damaged. I would like to change the phone for a new one. We always say change something for something else. Change the phone for a new one that is not damaged. Can you tell me how I can do this? Yours faithfully, Lama Sabri. Now, let's read the questions here. When did Lama order the phone? Last week. When was the delivery? It was today. What was the problem with the phone? As we said here, the screen of the phone was damaged. Number four, what does Lama want to do? Lama wants to change the broken phone for a new one which is not damaged. Number five, what does she want to know? She wanted to know how she can do this. Now we're going to know how to write a letter. And this is, of course, a formal letter. We start with writing, dear sir, if you're going to send this letter to a man, or dear madam, if you're going to uh, send this uh, letter or this email to a woman. So we write here, dear sir or dear madam. And then you write the topic of the letter. Okay, and at the end of the letter, we write yours faithfully. Yours faithfully, we use this expression when we are uh, sending the letter, uh, a formal letter to someone we don't know. He is not our friend. And then you write your name here like a signature. Now let's uh, do this exercise about writing a letter. Which of these phrases are used to start or end a formal letter or email? We use S to start and E for end. Dear sir or dear madam, 
if you don't know the name of the person, if, if you're sending the letter to someone, you don't know his name, we write dear sir or dear madam. Of course, we use this uh, to start the letter at the beginning of the letter, not at the end. Number two, yours faithfully. Yours faithfully, if you don't know the person. Also, we use the word yours faithfully or yours sincerely. If you're sending the letter to someone you don't know well. And we use it at the end, like here. Yours faithfully at the end of the letter or the end of the email. Dear Mr. Mrs. Miss plus the surname, if you know the name, if you know this person, we write dear Mr. or dear Mrs. and the name of this person if you know him. And of course we use it uh, to start. So we're going to write as here to start the letter. Number four, yours sincerely, yours sincerely, if you know the person. Yours sincerely equal the word faithfully. Faithfully, when we don't know this person well, and we use sincerely when we write a letter to someone we know. And of course, we use sincerely and faithfully to end the letter. Number five, best wishes or kind regards. We use them if you know the person well. If you're writing a letter or this email to your friend, to your cousin, to your brother or sister, write best wishes or kind regards at the end to end this letter. Please, you can mute. You can mute your the meeting, please. Now, match the verbs uh, to the nouns to make phrases. Wear, we always say, wear headphones. Wear headphones. But what, what's, uh, what is the, the word that comes after save? We always say, save time. Save time. Have a headache. Have a headache. Check social media. Check social media. Be addicted to something. Be addicted to something. Now, let's go to exercise number four. And this was uh, our last exercise here for this unit. Complete the sentence with the correct form of the verbs and should should and should or will and want. Now we have the answer of number one already. If you are on the computer for three hours, you should have a break. Number two, if you listen to too much, if you listen to too much loud music, you will get a headache. You will get a headache. Number three, number three, if you don't, if you don't do any exercise, you won't be healthy. If you don't do any exercise, you won't be healthy. Number four, if you want to go online, you should ask first. If you want to go online, you should ask first. Number five, if you are worried about something online, you should tell someone. Here we used should or shouldn't instead of will. If, mm -hmm. and then the present simple, and then after that we use should or shouldn't if you give advice to someone. And for example, okay. if, yes? Uh, do you hear me, right? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me well? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, okay. Okay, we use if plus present simple here like these verbs, all these verbs here in this space are used in the present simple. And what about the other verb? We use should or shouldn't if you want to give advice. For example, I can say, if you want to get the full marks, you should study well. If you want to be healthy, you shouldn't eat fast food. So I use should or shouldn't to give advice. But if we are talking about future prediction, we use will or want. For example, 
here. If you listen to much loud music, you will get a headache. Here I'm talking about a future predictions. That's why we use will or won't. But if you're giving advice, we use should or shouldn't. Okay, now we come to the end of unit seven. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, thank you. Goodbye until meet again.